Hello everybody, and welcome to my ranked game analysis. This is the first one I'm going to be uploading. So this is basically just going to be a series where I go over some of my ranked games. I'm uh, looking at how I can improve, how the games went, and hopefully it'll be somewhat entertaining for you guys. So we're playing on Serengeti, and I am playing as the Mongols, and my opponent, Academic Gecko is playing as the Bulgarians. And we're gonna see what happens in this game. So it starts off pretty standard. I've just got putting my six on the sheet. And I'm gonna be scouting around. And look at how great this is. If you can tell by the line of sight around the scout, this is the civilization bonus of the Mongols. And it's just it's it's it makes scouting so nice on this map. So yeah, now I've got my six on sheep. I'm of course moving to wood. And if you don't know about Mongols, their big bonus is their hunt. Any uh, any animals that they hunt, so not herdables like uh, like these goats and sheep or goose or whatever. But their hunt, they get a, a forty percent uh, hunt bonus too. It used to be fifty, but it got nerfed. And yeah, so as you can see, I'm just going around. I find two extra goats here. And it's a pretty standard opening so far. Find two more. Yep. We go look at my opponent over here. Uh, he's doing a very similar thing. Um, he's got his three on wood. Six here. And he's going for his first elephant. Pretty good timing. Go back to me. And should be very similar. Three on wood. We both want to open scouts, and that is a good way to do it. So I'm going for my house, and just continuing to scout around. Now, as this is a new map in the map pool and ranked game, I didn't actually know that you only get one main hunt animal. I was expecting a rhino or another elephant. So I do scout a little bit extra for that. But yeah, they make up for it by having extra ones that you lure or mill. But I actually go for the mill here. I'm actually curious to see what my opponent did. He actually has a really good map for where his hunt is. Or just a really good map in general, actually. Got black gold and everything. But yeah, so he's, he's just going for the hunt. Let's see what I'm doing. Now I finished my hunt really quick, thanks to Mongols. That idle time, not very good. But send four to each herdable. And I'm getting my fourth onto berries, which is what you want to do. So as you can see, I kind of go a bit over the top, scouting around my base, because I'm like, where's my other main thing? I thought for a little bit that he lamed me, but then I was like, looking at the score, I thought maybe not. And then I knew for sure when I saw his scout hit points later on. But anyways, I, I was like, okay, I need to make up for this. You don't want to go to herdables this early like I did. So I start uh, learning in the zebra. Go for the wood. And yeah, I bring in the first zebra there. See, what, what you want to do with Mongols, you probably want to go up on like 18 population, but because I didn't know the map, uh, which I do know, but I didn't know then, um, I didn't know to go for only this many. Um, or to go for the Zebra Lures this early. I get housed, which isn't great. So I switch to Loom there. Still not the best play by me. And I'm just learning the Zebra into main part of my base. And get a decent lure off there. Got two more here. We go to my opponent. He milled him. Maybe a bit easier. I'd say he maybe even put a few too many on there. But yeah. So my strategy so far is just to play scouts and see what my opponent does and try to react as best as I can to it. Um, yeah, I clicked up on 20 pop. Not too bad as the, as the Mongols, but not the best either. And I got a decent uh, Debra lure there. I do think at this point it's pretty important to Scout my opponent, do I do? 
Did I get this last ever? I can't remember. But we're about to find out. I, it looks like I'm going for it. Makes sense as I'm Mongols, I really need that food bonus. And because of the extra line of sight, it's quite easy to uh, scout your opponent quite quickly. Here. So yeah, pretty standard Dark Age, I'd say. Uh, so far, just general scouts build, get that final Zebra in, and I'm going to scout my opponent. In the meantime, let's see what my opponent's doing. Um, very similar, walling up his base a little bit. Uh, getting that pretty nice. I get pretty decent uh, fetal age time. And I'm going and scouting him right now. If we look at his scouting... Yeah, not too bad. Where is his scout? Over here. He must, he must have put it on auto scout. Which isn't the best play, but... Yeah, this is where I knew. Uh, I see his scout hit points here and I'm like, okay, he didn't lay me. You only get one. <laughs> or it's hiding like there or something crazy. But yeah, so I knew I was in feudal age, so obviously I have the extra speed, attack. Um, so I'm just going best I can to kill his scout before he goes up. And I'm already into scouts. This is the power of the Mongols. Um, and in this time, my opponent is going for men at arms. Which of course he gets as he goes up to the feudal age playing as the Bulgarians. So yeah, I'm just running in. This was maybe, I think this was my first mistake. Is it? No. Oh, I thought I lost that scout. I played this game yesterday, so I don't remember all of it. But yeah, so I'm just building up again at the back. Trying to put on a little bit of pressure here. Take a hit from the Spearmen. Not the best micro, but okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just building up at home. Uh, trying to add a few, few scouts. Got the mobile units, which is pretty nice. I see that he's walled up here. Which isn't the most useful. Switch back to me here. There it is. I, I knew I lost a scout to these men at arms, but it turns out that it was here. Now, originally, I thought these were spearmen because I didn't actually see my scout go down. But then he walks his men at arms. This is quite unlucky. I put this house up quite strategically, which is quite nice. And he loses all of his men at arms. So that puts him back quite a bit. Um, but you got to watch. You got to watch your units. And that's why your unit control is so important. So I've got a pretty good uh, lead. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to regroup my scouts. Try and get some damage in. Just be as much of a pain as I can and control the map. And while I do that, build up from home. Got a little bit of idle time here. Uh, that's something I need to work on. I want to make sure that you have as little idle time as possible with each villager. Um, not too bad. Everything else seems to be fairly reasonable. And as I said, I'm just grouping up my scouts, preparing to go in uh, and try and harass. But he's done the right thing. And he has Spearman's uh, defending. So as I come in, I see that, and I'm like, it's a bit of a pain. But I only see one when I originally went in, but then I was like, okay, it's got two more. I'm not going to lose hit points for no reason. I've got a good lead. I'm going to get Bloodline, sit back, and just do some damage. I actually don't like that I brought them all the way back. I should have stayed around his base, kept scouting, make sure he wasn't transitioning. But thankfully for me, as we can see, there's no transition. Looks like he's just preparing to go up to Castle Age. If we actually look at his economy, it's a bit imbalanced. You don't want that much gold. He didn't need those three on gold unless he was going for archers. But yeah. And if we look at my economy, my economy's tailored 100% just to continue a little bit of, of an attack, everything like that, building up. See, I have my blacksmith going up here. Continuing scout production. And I realize I should probably be staying forward. I lose a scout pretty bad there. Not uh, not the best unit control. But again, I, I, I know I'm in the lead. I'm just trying to play a bit passively. I dive in a bit here, 
See if I can get any pain. I knew his spearman would be here. Cause a little bit of idle time. I think I get a pick off on this villager. I'm quite happy about that. Tried to do a little fancy move, but I think, I think the arrows hit anyways. Then I was like, okay. I can dive here now because the spearmen are out of position. So I take my three higher hit points to deal with the spearmen and my three lower hit point. I actually did do this three lower point um, scouts to deal damage to his villagers. And I get some nice pickoffs. Quite happy with this. I move him out of the way. I noticed he was on low hit points. He was a bit slow to garrison his TC, so I get quite lucky with that. And in the meantime, if you look at my economy, we go back here. Just slowly building up quite nice. I know there's a small imbalance. I'm building the market so I can go up to the castle age. It's also worth noting, since I took a nice commanding lead, I wanted to go for Mangudai. Um, so I put five on stone over this course. And my plan is basically to transition the Mangudai and try and keep my scouts alive so I have some um, something to deal with, say, skirmishers or whatever else. And as soon as I get my market up, I'm on my way to Castle Age. It's pretty nice. Uh, not too much is happening right now, so we can speed up a little bit. I'm just kind of keeping my scouts waiting, see if he's doing anything. The better thing to do with this and this is what I'm going to try and be doing a bit more of, is just using the mobility of this, like I should have immediately spotted that, because my scout should have just been running around, getting intel, seeing if I can get little pickoffs, and stuff like that. So let's go back to normal play speed. Got my castle going up here. I'm sending a few back here, uh, villagers back here, to get uh, another town center out. He's moved to stone over here. We find out later that's because he wants to move to Conix, which, yeah, fair enough. But I'm like, I could tell by the score and everything that, and that since I was Castle Age faster, that this was basically my game. Didn't need to dive in, didn't need to do anything crazy. Just sit, sit back, build up my uh, Mangudai army, build my economy, build another town center. And as you see, once I get another 100 stone, I think I go for another another town center. I might even buy, buy the stone here. So my opponent here really should have been... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised by his by his moves so far. Um, honestly, I should have been applying a lot more pressure with these. And I should have known about this. And everything else. But that's okay. I think pressure is something I definitely want to work on, especially when I have a lead. Maintaining map control, because by moving these back, I kind of, I kind of go, well, you don't have map control, but I also don't have map control. So it's kind of, I'm not getting the full value out of my military units. But nonetheless, I've got a big lead in the game so far, just building up Mangudai um, production. And again, like if we look at, uh, if we look at what I can see, I haven't seen his base in five minutes. I have no idea what his military is. I don't know what he's building. I'm kind of doing this blindly, but again, it's a strong army, so there's not much that can counter these two units. I see his, uh, his scout comes in here, just scouting me, which is good. Good play by him. Mangy die production, I just keep up. I teched into light cav. Um, I only have fletching right now. Uh, one thing that would have been nice maybe before going in here would have been to go to Bodkin. So of course I'm moving my light cav back, killing them with the Mangudai from a range. Um, I did lose one unnecessarily, but again, my mechanics aren't as good as they could be yet. I get a nice pick off here. I'm killing the stables. This is where I get my intel, so I'm like, okay, so he must be going for knights. That's actually a crep host. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. But yeah, I thought that was a stable. Um, so now I'm just like, okay, I can just sit here. I'm pretty sure I just sit here and control that gold. At the same time, um, 
I just kind of kind of sit here, try and do a little bit of damage here and there. Keep his farms idle and move back and forward. Not the best military control by me. There's no reason to lose those two Mangudai. But yeah. I believe the other thing I go for is a university. I really want to get ballistics on these, make them really powerful. And at this point I know the, the game is basically over. But it's just about playing the macro game, waiting it out. And yeah. So we can see what he's doing. He's scouting over here, I suppose. This is actually a good move by him. And I'm not paying attention to this. I'm just paying attention to my economy, building everything up at home. Uh, he builds Krepos, quite nice. He kills, I believe, two here. Yeah, and I escape with my final one. But at home, of course, I've got eight Mangudai saved up in there. I've got my got my light cav just hanging around, um, making sure if he goes forward, I know about it. If we go to his point of view now, um, oh, I don't have a hotkey for Krepos. He is just going for his conics now. Um, I don't think they counter Mangudai, especially in mass. So questionable unit choice by my opponent. But yeah, um, nothing really interesting to say here. I see this go up because I have everything in there. Um, that's actually quite nice. This got over chopped and because the forests are really awkward on this map, I get into his back eco. I do a lot of damage. I see the conics here, but again, that doesn't really worry me with, with this massive Mangy die, right? And I'm running those ones away. Another important upgrade, you'll see my cavalry run a lot faster. I got husbandry really fast. When you go cav arch or mangudai, or any cavalry unit really. Really, really underrated uh, upgrade. It's so important. It, the, the, your mobility um, for your units, so important. So as you see, I just micro these. And this is what I was talking about. Even in a small mass of just nine, Mangudai, I'm I'm crushing his unit choice, and they they turn into the into the infantry, but it doesn't matter because at that point they're not mobile enough to catch my Mangudai. So yeah, I'm just happy to keep this part of his uh, farming eco occupied and build up at home. So if we look, I've got TC spread out, spread out economy, I've got a castle. Producing more Mangudai. I've got him locked up into like a small little base where part of it is idle anyways. I'm quite happy with with how this game's going. So let's let's speed forward a little bit. This just stays idle. Try and pick off little things where I can. And I'm up to the Imperial Age. Maybe it would have been nice to move them a bit earlier, but yeah. So I'm going for the archery range to get, um, what is it called? Thumb ring. Yeah, I want to get all my upgrades for my Mangudai once I go up. And then it's just kind of like the death ball from there. Again, I keep these Mangudai here just in case he's trying to send anything forward. But I'm feeling pretty secure at home. Most of my economy is behind or right by my TC or castle. I've got more Mangudai at home as well, which can be mobilized quite quickly. I'm taking relics. Um, yeah, it was just playing the macro game and waiting for upgrades to come in. Honestly, I maybe could have finished this faster. Just put a siege workshop and just ended the game, but it didn't matter. Uh, so let's just move forward, see what happens. So yeah, I'm going for Cav, another castle. Playing, playing for the long game here. I run out. Because his, his conics engaged and he calls the game and it, it, it was very viable for him to call the game he wasn't up to imperial age i was going to have elite mangudai bracer chemistry everything another castle i was going to go hussar raid and just uh get trebuchets out and finish that was my plan but yeah uh i hope you enjoyed um, 
we'll take a quick look at the statistics before I go off. So obviously I had the big military advantage. Um, food, wood, uh, I had bigger economy, so that makes sense. He had a bit more stone though, and I had way more gold. That's not a bad time for uh, Feudal Age. Generally, you're looking at around 1020, 1025, something like that. Um, but with Mongols, with that hunt bonus, you can get up really fast and do a really nice scout rush. Um, and Castle Age, not bad again. And of course, I get to imp first. I also made a point of exploring the map. That was part of my macro approach. Just control the game, control the map. Um, Box my player in, have a better economy, win the game. Yeah, it's almost like a chess type game instead of playing aggressively. More villagers, I got the relic in. I had two more coming in, so yeah. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed. If you like this format, uh, please tell me. If you have any, um, if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I'm looking to learn. Uh, also, any any anything about the video, anything like that, definitely please let me know. But I hope you enjoyed, and yeah, I hope to see you soon.